Hello, and welcome to the PRSS 118 Introduction to Provider and MCO Delegate Management Training Session. During this session, we'll show you how to set up delegate role assignments in the provider portal. The process in the provider portal and the MCO portal are very similar. The role assignments and portal used are the main difference between the two processes. So today, we are going to focus, though, on that provider portal. Our agenda will be adding a delegate and managing delegate role assignments. Learning objectives will be to explain the purpose of setting up delegate role assignments and identify where to manage delegate information. We're going to start with adding a delegate. We will add a registered delegate and then we will also example how to add an unregistered delegate in the provider portal. Before we begin, there are various roles that can be assigned within the portal, so let's take a look at these. If you are the provider, you have a few options depending on the level of control you want over your information and tasks performed on your behalf. If you are an individual provider, you can directly assign and manage delegates to perform tasks such as submitting claims on your behalf. If you don't want to manage those delegates yourself, you can assign a delegate administrator to manage them for you. This administrator can also perform tasks that the delegates do. If you are an individual provider within a group of providers and you don't want to perform the administrative work yourself or assign and manage delegates, you have the option to assign an authorized administrator who will maintain all your provider account information and tasks. During enrollment, this provider type has the choice to opt out of portal access and rely solely on that administrator for all updates and processing of tasks. Existing individual within a group providers will automatically be registered to access the portal even if they decide to fully leverage that administrator for such tasks. Keep these roles in mind because the authorized administrator and delegates who work on behalf of more than one provider will see something slightly different when they log into the portal. Let's take a look at how to manage delegates in the portal, but before we get started with that, we will take a look at what you will see whenever you log into MES. So you're always going to start at the secure MES login page. We don't demo this today because the training environment is not connected to MES, but I want to make sure that you will notice here that whenever you start in the live environment, when you go live, you're going to have a username and a password. So you will begin at this MES, this secure MES login page. So you're going to enter your credentials and then you're going to select sign in. Once you sign in, it's going to bring you to this MES landing page and you will notice that there is a tile that populates kind of at the bottom of this page. So this tile will say provider management. You will see a little drop down arrow. When you select this little drop down arrow, it will then populate the PRSS portal link that you'll need to click. When you click the link, it will take you to the portal. So let's log into the training environment so you can see what this will look like. Okay, so now that we have selected our PRSS link, it brings us to our provider login page. So we will go to the top left of our login page and we're going to log in as group provider 05. I'm going to bring a let me grab my password here. So the provider that we are logging in as. So we click submit here. So you're going to notice that this provider has more than one service location. It is also an authorized administrator for an individual within a group. So it logs us right into a switch provider page for advanced telepsychiatry. So we've logged in as our provider who would be advanced telepsychiatry. We have our NPI number here. It brings us right into a switch provider page because you notice that we now need to select do we want to manage the affiliations associated to our group. So we, again, we are an authorized administrator 
for an affiliation in our group. So we can select yes, which would bring us that provider name, but we're gonna select no because what we are here to do is go to learn how to add registered and an unregistered delegate. So we're gonna go right to our maintenance tab, scroll down to the, in the drop down we have manage delegates. So we're gonna select manage delegates. On the delegates page, you're going to notice that we have different service locations. So if we select the drop down at the end of service locations, it now will populate the service locations that we have for advanced telepsychiatry. So at the bottom of this page, you notice we have a list of our registered delegates. So these are the delegates that are associated with our provider. So let's go up and select a different location though, because what you're gonna notice is the Follow Water location only has two delegates associated with that location. If I go up and I select the, say the second location, now you notice I have four delegates that are associated with this Halifax location. So let's go back up to the first location that only has two delegates. On this page, we have an Add Unregistered Delegate tab and we have an Add Registered Delegate tab. So we're going to select Add Registered Delegate that's gonna bring us to the add registered delegate window. All we need here is a last name. So we're gonna type in Garcia. And then we need a relationship code that comes from that delegate. So we're going to ask that delegate when we choose to add them as a delegate for our, our provider, we're gonna ask them for their relationship code. So I have a relationship code that I'm gonna bring over. and we'll populate that relationship code. And when the last name and relationship code are validated by the system, and we do that when we click continue, the add registered delegate window displays with the validated delegates information. So now you notice that because Brandon is in the system, we have his first and last name, Again, we have his email and his relationship code. I want you to note this active checkbox. So the active checkbox indicates whether this delegate has the permissions to work on your behalf. So you're going to make sure that at the top of this window where it says active, that you check this checkbox because that will indicate whether that delegate can work on your behalf. So delegate access is associated with service locations. The delegate can have access to more than one, or the delegate can have access to one. There's three options when managing delegate access. So we are going to go back over to our slides real quickly. So the provider portal delegate security access, there are three options. You can assign all service locations and security functions, set a master DA that sets that master delegate administrator for all locations with all security functions. You can also assign all service locations, but assign selected security functions. And that's going to set a delegate with the selected security functions that you select to all of your locations, all of your provider locations. The third option is to select service locations and select security functions. So you would set a delegate to selected locations for your provider, and then you would select the security functions that you want to allow that delegate to have. And those may vary per location. All right, so let's go back over to our ad registered delegate. Notice the first option is assign all service locations and security functions. So if I select the first radio button for assign all service locations and all security functions, that means that I have nothing left to assign other than whether I want to make this delegate a delegate administrator. If I select delegate administrator, this delegate has all service locations so is a delegate administrator for all service locations and has all security, automatically has all security functions for all service locations, but also has the ability to maintain delegates for all of those service locations. So we're gonna deselect delegate administrator. We're also gonna go down and instead of all service 
locations and security functions, we're going to select assign all service locations, but assign selected security functions. When I select that radio button, notice we now have two boxes at the bottom here. We have available functions and we have selected functions. So these are security functions or work functions that are available to this delegate at our service locations. So I'm going to select message center and uh, let's see. So to move that over from available to selected, we would go to this arrow button in the middle and that's gonna move that one available function over. So this is a, so now a selected function for this delegate. If I wanna select more than one, I'm gonna scroll down on this window a little bit here. If I wanna select more than one available functions to move over, let's say I wanna select claims for this delegate. I also wanna select resources. So I would click and hold the control button on my computer and then I would simply go down and also select resources. Notice when I select those options, they change a little different color. I would come back over here to my arrow and I'm gonna move those two available functions and it moves them into the selected functions for that delegate. If I wanna move all available functions over at one time because I want them to have everything but maybe one or two, I can use the double arrows in the middle here and that's going to move all available functions over to selected functions for that delegate. Then I can move back, let's say I wanna move back claims so then I would go to this single arrow button and move it back over to available. And I want also to take back the eligibility verification. So again, I would select it so it changes that darker color. And then I would select this arrow icon. And now you see that this delegate has all selected security functions or work functions assigned to them. So all of these selected functions are assigned to that delegate. Okay, so the other option that we have, let's say, no, I don't want this delegate to have all service locations assigned to them. I want to select my locations and my security or work functions. So I'm going to select this radio button. And now you notice that we can now select the different service locations that we have for our provider. And we can also select whether they're a delegate administrator for that location. So we want this delegate to be an active delegate for our 1727 location and our 3152 location. I am not gonna select delegate administrator. If I did, it would take notice over here where it says security functions on this table. It says all security functions are selected for this delegate at this specific location. So I'm gonna take that out. So I don't want them to be a delegate administrator for that. I want to select for this 1727 location, I want to go down and select my available functions for this delegate. So I'm going to select the first resources. I'm going to select a couple more. So I want to hold down on my control button, select a couple of those available functions. I'm going to go over to the arrow and I'm going to move them from available to selected. So now you notice up here for this location, the 1727 location, the security functions that are assigned to this delegate are listed in this table. So it's the same security functions that we have down in our selected security functions table. Okay, so if I go down to the 3152 location and I click on that, it's gonna again turn it a darker color. Notice that nothing has been assigned for this location for this delegate. Delegates have to have, if you're going to have them active at a service location, they have to have functions or work items selected for them. So we're just going to select resources, search members. And again, we're going to move it from available. So we highlighted that, or we clicked on it, which changed it. So that was selected available function. We're going to move it over to selected function with this arrow and notice then up here, where we have our 3152 location, that the security function assigned to this delegate is the same as what we selected down here. Okay, so we go down to the bottom of our window. We have a submit button. We wanna select submit. And what that's going to do is assign those service locations, those security functions to that delegate. 
So up at the top of our window now, it says add registered delegate was successfully saved. So you're gonna notice that pop-up or that banner. Okay, so you can also add a delegate who is not currently associated with you and does not currently have an account within the system. So they don't have a relationship code. So to do that, they would be considered an unregistered delegate. So we're gonna go down to this add unregistered delegate button and we select that and we come up with an add unregistered delegate window. So we are going to add a last name here. So let's see, who do we wanna add? We are going to add Veronica Wang. So the last name is Wang, first name is Veronica. We have an email address. We have a birth date, so every field that is asterisk is required. We need the last four of this unregistered delegate social security number, so we're gonna say 4444. We also will need a phone number. And we will select a primary language. Notice again, we have the active checkbox that we will select because we want this delegate to be active for our provider. Again, down at the bottom, we have the add options. So we can assign all service locations and all security functions with just the click of this radio button. We can select to add this delegate as a delegate administrator with just selecting this checkbox, or we can go down and assign all service locations but select security functions where we would move our available functions over to selected functions with a click of that arrow in the middle. Or we can say we want to assign select service locations and select security functions with again the click of this radio button down here that would be underneath. Then we would tell the system which locations we want this delegate to be active at, and also if they're going to be a delegate administrator for us, we would go down to the bottom then and select what functions, what available functions for this location we want this delegate to be assigned to. So you would select the functions. Again, I, I held down on control on my keyboard and I selected or highlighted these available functions. Go over here to the middle and I can select that arrow icon or button to move everything that I selected from available to selected functions for this specific delegate. And then at the bottom of this page, I just simply select Submit. At least one security function must be assigned to the service location, yes. And I notice up here in my window, I have selected some locations that I did not assign this delegate any security functions to. So if that's my mistake and I didn't mean to select those locations, I just deselect them. Or if I just forgot to assign the security function, I would again highlight that location and then I would go down and I would select the functions for that delegate. But again, this is, remember, an unregistered delegate. So I'm going to click Submit. And this time it's going to go through because all service locations that I assigned to this delegate, I have also assigned the functions to, the security functions to. All right. So again, notice here at the top of this page that you have added unregistered delegate was successfully saved. So this is what we want to see. So with an unregistered delegate, the thing to remember is the delegate receives an email to complete portal registration. So this unregistered delegate does not have access to the account from the switch organizations until this delegate receives the email and completes the portal registration. Then the delegate will be able to access the account from switch organizations as soon as the registration is complete. So we'll move back to our slides. And now we're going to, going to discuss managing delegate role assignments. So those delegates that are already assigned for our provider, we're going to show you how to edit those or how to manage those delegates. 
All right, so we will switch back to our provider window. All right, so notice we have our providers down here, the bottom table where it says registered delegates. We can, again, select a different service location. We'll select one that has more delegates. So here we are. All right, and notice that we have our Brandon Garcia that we added as a registered delegate earlier is now populated in this window. So we have Michaela Brown and Michaela, we have decided to give her a few more security functions. So for Michaela Brown, we're gonna manage this delegate is already in our system. We would highlight her, her record and then we would double click on it or just double click on it and it will bring up the assigned delegate window. And again, we can go down and we can assign more service locations. We can unassign service locations. We can go down then and we can select different, we wanna to add to Michaela's functions or work functions, we wanna add the resources. So we select resources, again, it highlights or it turns that that function a different color, go up here to this button, this arrow button, and it will move over from an available function to a selected function. And then again, if we scroll back up here and we look at that location, we're gonna notice that that, that resources has been added. Oh, actually, that's not the right location. So it, we're gonna notice that it's going to change and add into the security functions for that location. So the location that we have, yep, have selected was one that I think I made inactive. So we're gonna make that active again. And again, we have added that resources a security function. So we go back down, we click save, or that's not gonna be changed. And then notice again at the top of our window, we're gonna see a signed delegate was successfully saved. So that is how to manage your delegates that are currently in your system. We're going to go up and log out for security purposes. Anytime you walk away from your desk to do whatever or your end of the day, you're going to want to make sure that you log out of the system. So that is all security. And we didn't do that when we were flipping back and forth, going back and forth from slides to the system because we were popping right back in. All right, so let's move on to a few questions from this section. So our first question is providers. MCOs and ASOs can give portal access to their clerical or administrative staff. Is this statement true or false? The correct answer for this statement would be true. Our second question is a delegate administrator has access to all security functions, including the ability to add and maintain delegates. Keywords here are would be the delegate administrator. Is that true or false? This statement would be true. Our third question. When an unregistered delegate is added, the delegate has immediate access to the authorized portal functionality. Is that true or false? The correct answer to this would be false. Remember that delegate must follow instructions sent to their email to complete the registration before they have access. And our last question, what information must a registered delegate supply in order to be added as a delegate to another account? And you can select all that apply here. Remember when we added a registered delegate, we selected that button popped up that long field. So what would we need in order for the delegate to be added to another account? And the correct answer would be last name and relationship code. So in this session, we explained the purpose of setting up delegate role assignments. We identified where to manage delegate information and a training resource that would be available and helpful for this topic would be the Provider Portal User Guide. Congratulations, you have now completed Introduction to Provider and MCO Delegate Management or PRSS 118. Thank you.